Coming to you from UBN Studios in Burbank, California. You're listening to the Unsugarcoated Podcast with your host, Ali Alanius. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of your favorite social good podcast. I am so happy to be here and have an incredible guest in our studio today. Um, but first, let's talk about the, the topic of conversation. We're going to be talking about personal branding. And if you don't know what it is, you should. A personal brand is the unique combination of skills and experiences that make you who you are. It is how you present yourself to the world and, into the, and in return, how the world sees you. So personal branding, if done effectively, will differentiate you from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective prospective clients and customers. And I think that that's something a lot of us seek to do, right? We look to connect, we look to sell the products and services we have, but how do we do that most effectively? And with mediums like social media, people are able to not just share their own perspectives and experiences, but support and affiliate themselves with organizations, movements, and ideas they find to be meaningful. So everyone knows that Unshared and Coded Media, we're all about social impact. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Well, for me, we're not necessarily tied to the success of a product. We're, to, we're tied to the success of a movement, an idea that we can help other creatives create socially conscious content. But that takes a message. That takes branding. And if you want to set yourself up, self apart, it could be more powerful to build your brand around a singular result, such as eliminating disparities in high school graduation rates or increasing access to high quality early learning to improve kindergarten readiness. By focusing on results instead of topics, you have an opportunity to not only just stand to not only stand out, but be part of a larger effort in your community to achieve something mean, meaningful in our society. So today we have somebody who is going to talk about this subject with us. And by the time we're done, you're going to have a very, very good understanding of what personal branding is and how we can apply it in the social impact world. So without further ado, let's get started. Jonathan George is the CEO of Unleash Your Rockstar, a personal branding agency, and has spent the past 20 years creating rockstar personal brands for celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers with over 150 million followers online. As a thought leader on personal branding, Jonathan is disrupting not only how people think on the topic, but also how schools and corporations are developing individuals and teams for a much more confident, healthy, and successful outcome. He is known as the human hitmaker because of his ability to identify, extract, and cultivate people's greatest untapped assets to break through the imposter syndrome for their highest potential of influence. Jonathan believes everyone needs a personal brand. However, the depth of your brand will depend on the depth of your goals. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jonathan George. Good to be here. What is up, my friend? Good to finally see your face because I see you every day on Clubhouse. You, you see so my logo. I see. I see this. Right. <laughs> this is the this is the face. If you know Clubhouse, it's that right. Right. Which is you know I swear by the time this season is over, people are going to think I work for Clubhouse. Or something. I don't know, like, right. It's really cool because it has led to just so many uh, opportunities to meet and connect, and we wouldn't know each other otherwise. And I feel that in LA, it's interesting because it's a big city, but it's also very small. Mm -hmm. So we know a lot of people in common. My one of our interns, Sarah Jane, shout out, was one of your oh music gosh. students. <laughs> right, I right. died when I told her like this is he's coming on our podcast. She's like, Oh my God. He used to teach me vocal lessons. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. this is so crazy. And now she's all grown up. She's she's a, you she's graduate actually now, student. So here's the thing. Let's talk about that. Like you were once a creative uh, an artist yourself. Yeah. Tell us about that story and probably let's start with like the highest point of that for you. So, you know, I moved out here. I, I have a music education degree, actually, a certified music teacher, taught school for a while, um, but just knew I wasn't happy. You know, I was like, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, I, I was like, I'm too, way too creative for this. So I moved out uh, to Los Angeles in 2000. I was on a show called Next Big Star, which was Ed McMahon's new star search show, yes, right? Yes. And so I, I was grand champion on there and I had a record deal on the table. I just released my first single. I had released, um, I was working on my album and I just released my music video. You know, I was thinking I was Ricky Martin back in the day, you know, like shake a bomb, but you know, doing my thing. But um, literally I got a call from the label and they retracted my contract and come to find out it was because they found out that I was gay. That's when, you know, Google was new. They Googled me, found out uh, that I was gay. And so 
they completely retracted my contract. Uh, my team tried to get me married. They tried to change my music, try to change all these things about me. And uh, I was a country artist at the time. And so with that, I, I remember I was like 26 years old and I was laying there in my living room, just sitting there, just, you know, you know, crying. And literally, um, it took me back to being that kid who was relentlessly bullied for being, you know, extra, the kid with the jazz fingers, the kid who, you know, was super creative and being called names that didn't even know what they were. I just knew that it was, you're not good enough. Something is innately wrong with you. And then my dad's a Pentecostal pastor and I have incredible parents, but still because they did what they thought they were supposed to do out of, out of love and spirituality, I, the spiritual abuse I went through was astronomical. Um, you know, so much mental issues coming from that, right? You know, the depression, anxieties, suicidal thoughts, like why, why am I living? Right. But all I heard was you're not good enough. And, you know, here I am at 26 at it again. You're not good enough. It doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter how great you think you are. You're not good enough. And I literally, I just was like, you know what? I'm not going to lie to the world. I'm not going to lie. I don't know where, how to show up. I don't know how to be me. I don't even know who I am at this point. Right. So, but I do know that I'm not going to lie. And so I gave up singing at that time and I started developing uh, because I have a music degree, so I started teaching voice lessons, you know, to survive. But I really, what that process was, is me branding, everything that I've done since then has been branding young people, young talent to shine as the, their authentic selves, rather than trying to change them and make them something different. Right. And to what I think they should be, what the world thinks they should be. No, it is exactly who you are meant to be. And we're going to bring that to the forefront, regardless of who likes it. I couldn't do that for myself, but I have done that for everybody else. And my clients now have over 150 million on, uh, online followers. And all I can say is, how do you like those jazz fingers now? Right. <laughs> so, it. you know, it came <laughs> yes. in, it came in handy, but you know, that's, that was where I started and, and how I, how I got into personal uh, branding. When you talk about that, I, it's very interesting to me because I was at a uh, party in Miami in, I want to say 2001, 2002. It was Winter M Music Conference. Ricky Martin. It was a Ricky Martin party. And Universal was there. And I remember that there were conversations heavily around, he's gay. We know this, but we have to keep this under wraps. Because exactly, I know what you're talking about. I was like, come on, Ricky, help right? a brother out, man. We all know it. Like, we all are like, well, right, you know, yeah, yeah. but I mean, at the end of the day, I think that that can be very um, reflective of industry's fear. It's marketing, right? Like, why do you think that, I mean, what is it that they, why do they do that? Why did they say, aside from the, you're not good enough, they're afraid they're not going to sell records, right? right? Like the well, image, because, it's all about the image. Well, it's, it's also because young girls are the ones who, you know, back then were buying and still to this day, I think is, you know, the wide market is, you know, it's the reason why boys are so hot in the industry because girls are buying the albums. But now it's like with social media, which I know we're going to talk about so much stuff today, but that it's, you're allowed to just be yourself. And the more you are your authentic self, the more people love you. Right. 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 And we're so tired of living in these boxes that, that society has put on us. And you know this, uh, I mean, more than anybody, you know, when you told your story in Clubhouse, I was like, I didn't know this stuff about you. I was like, oh my God, you know, but it's incredible that we all, everybody in this room, we all experience it the same way okay. of some societal box that we have to live in. And I say, no, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no, I'm no, no, no. I want you to stand up at exactly who you are so that you can impact the world the way that you were born to be. I love it. I love it because you know what? Exactly. Unsugar coated media, that's what the unsugar coated represents. Like you as a creative are ready to stand in your truth and who you are and be unapologetic. That doesn't mean you have to be a jerk, but it does mean that you be authentic and true. And you're so right. So talking about, okay, so you had this high point. I mean, what really was the lowest point for you as a creative? Like I know you shared the moment on the couch, but what was really a defining moment for you? Well, you know, I mean, again, it, it was, you're not good enough. And that was the thing, that same theme that kept happening over and over in my life. And, you know, that was where I had to be like, uh, you're not good enough to com continue. I mean, that was really the lowest point. But I do have to say that out of that low point, 
man, the greatest gifts of my life have come up from that. And I do have to say this is that four years ago, I had this transformational journey that, that I went through that was so powerful spiritually. I went to Bali on a, on a retreat and I'd never been to anything since I was an adult. I always went to summer camps that always were life-changing for me and did that all the way, you know, through high school and even through, you know, college. But as an adult working all those hours, pouring into people, I was exhausted. It was like a shriveled up prune. And so I went to this thing and I, I just busted open and remembered who I am at my core. And so two years ago, I decided that I really wanted to speak and I wanted to uh, be able to share my story and make a greater impact. And this is where I believe that personal branding is personal development just done with such clear intention. I always say it's like it's personal branding on our personal development on crack, right? right it's right. just sped up. It's, it's very intentional. Let's break through this stuff. Let's get to the other side with great intention. Right. And so, cause I find that to everything to move so much faster just because I developed artists for so long. And so I formulated this thing for 20 years, 21 years of incredible impact. Right. So I was just like, Oh my gosh. So I wanted to, to I'm created, I created this whole movement about unleash a rock star and rock star status, baby. I don't know yes, if you, you have. Um, but you know, be able to, uh, to really help people step into their power on all levels. And so as I began to articulate my story, I hired a company to help me. Now I help everybody else right. tell their story came to me. Couldn't do it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> couldn't do it. And they were like, you have to tell the story about being gay and the whole, I was like, listen, it's always been my life about that. I don't want to be the gay guy. I just want to be the guy. Right. I just want to be the guy who really knows his stuff and gets stuff done and is super impactful. But then I realized how empowering my story really is. And when I share that, how many, like, you know, you stand in front of an audience of 550 year olds, you know, men, white men at that, you know, you're just like going, oh God, this is painful. Like, you know, this has been like the thing that's kept me down. And when I tell that story and I tell it from an empowered place and I also connect with the audience that my, what I went through may not look like what you go through, but what we all know is what it feels like to not be good enough. Right. Exactly. We all collectively know what yes. that feels like. And so I, I now am able to tell that story from such an empowered place to impact. And so that is where, I mean, I'm creating a big, huge movement around this because of that, because I never want anyone to feel that. Right. So unleash your rock star, which by the way, for the audience at home, he brought me a little, I love this. We talk about unleash your rock star. And I love what's in it, the thoughtful Jonathan George, the human hit maker. I mean, this is part of branding, right? Yes, that's <laughs> part right. Of branding. This was my speaker kit that I, I take out, but I, I love, but these cards I made, I actually designed them, created them, and they're, they're, there's a package in there so you can show people that you love. Yes. And the water bottle says, stay thirsty, hashtag rock star status. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, the That's good fun. thirsty, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good thirsty, but I love yeah, that. Stay thirsty. And, and and that is important. I think that when when we talk and we do, we spend a lot of time in Clubhouse offering advice and our knowledge and you know to others. When people there was a conversation last night about getting unstuck. And I mean I think part of that is like to get unstuck, you have to be thirsty. I always say you can't you can take a horse to water. But you can't, can't make, make a drink, drink. but nope. you can put salt in that hay and make him thirsty. Right, right, <laughs> and, right, right. And what is our thirst? So, so, and I mean, I feel like personal branding, I mean, it's a frequency, a vibration you're putting out, right? And depending on how strong your frequency is, that's how you get people to respond. So moving into how you help others raise their frequency and bring that awareness, you're doing it for Unleash Your Rockstar. Well, first of all, I will go back. I know I'm sorry, I got into, I got all excited, but what does Unleash Your Rockstar, you know, what is that, what is the message behind that? I mean, you kind of went into it, but I really want you to have the opportunity to hit home on that. And then in, is that how you are helping others raise their vibra their vibration and frequency yes, as well? Yes, 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 yes. I love that you're talking about vibration. You know, I'm such, I'm a music guy. So if you take two tuning forks and you hit this tuning fork, if I gave you the tuning fork, everything, ding, 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 and we stop, this tuning fork over here is going to vibrate at the same level, ding, ding, ding. So that is how it works, right? It's all vibrations, all, we're all energy. That's it, right? So 
unleash your rock star you know i mean everybody's like rock star i mean as a kid you know we had to burn our rock albums and stuff because they were devil's music but to me a rock star is just somebody who is unapologetic who stands boldly in their in their greatness bo stands boldly in their flaws their story their gifts and their talents and their abilities and they go out into the world and they use it in a powerful way that is what a rock star is to me and i'm saying unleash that rock star let it out we're going to bring that to the forefront and make some superstars in life not on, i'm not looking for somebody to have to be a superstar on stage i'm talking right. about be a superstar in life right that's what it's about yeah and i do want to say this about personal branding is that i want you to think as as personal branding just remember this it's like the hook of a song when someone, when you walk away, what are people going to be singing about you? Think about your favorite song. When that radio, when it comes on, right, this is how we do it. Hey, you know, we're like, we jam to it. When you walk in the room, are people going to turn you up? Are they going to turn you off? Are they going to forget your lyrics altogether? Right? I want you to think how powerful have you written your song for the world to really remember you? What kind of emotional aftertaste are you leaving? after we've had a conversation. That is a personal brand. Now, the depth of that brand depends on the depth of your goals. So if you're a college student compared to somebody who's wanting to be a thought leader, your depth of your brand is gonna be much greater. Right. You gotta build that brand out. And then that comes into more of a, the business kind of sense to it all. But, and, and I know we're gonna jump into that, but I just really wanted to clarify the difference of what a, per, like what really truly a personal brand is. Because a lot of times we think, oh, uh, Steve Jobs, he's a big personal brand. Yes, he is. But he's also got a very in-depth brand. Right. It's right. built out strategically. Whereas, you know, if you're if you're a college student who's just trying to make an impact in the world and show up just even on a dating app, knowing how to show up on a dating app and feel confident in yourself. Right. 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 So right. that's what a personal brand really is. Yeah, that's funny you say that because my sister, she'll kill me. My adopted sister went and put her, she got on a, I, I encouraged her after divorce or I said, you know, just get out there and meet people. And she's like, what do I put? I'm like, just be honest. Like, just be honest. But just, you know, and it was really funny because I actually wrote her bio. Right. I know. I wrote my mom's. She got married. <laughs> I was like, mom, I was like, oh my God. I was like, nobody's going to want to date you with this bio. You're going to scare them off. Well, I met like my a husband. Jesus freak over here. I was like, let's, we got to make you a little sexier. Come on. <laughs> she got married. She got been happily happily married, and that's amazing. And I think that's the one thing that's really important too is never giving up hope and and realizing. And everything that you're saying is so true. And I feel that when you really do unleash your rock star, you, you are amazed at what starts gravitating towards you. What starts becoming attracted to you because you're no longer that toxic energy or you're no longer struggling. People feel we, like you say. I love that when you said that because I am energy. And if I'm in a bad mood, you can feel it really quick, right? Yeah, right. But if I'm in a good mood. You also can feel it really quick. But you can also switch just like that by choice and by getting by somebody else who's vibrating at a, a, at a higher, higher level. level. Exactly. Right? When your vibrational level is, if you get around somebody who's higher frequency, man, they, they just make you start laughing. They start switching you and changing you and helping you be able to turn your frequency up. Right. You know, so right. it's very empowering. For sure. So is personal branding for everyone? 100%. You know, it's really crazy. I, four years ago, I didn't know what personal branding was. I didn't know that's what we called it. <laughs> you know what? I didn't either. I'm like, wait, uh, that's what we've been doing all along. <laughs> right, right. You right? Know, it's like we, we, we developed artists. We built star brands, but we didn't know of it as personal branding, right? Right, right. And as I, I was trying to figure out, I was like, man, I really, I want to, I, you know, everything I do is really personal development. It's really crazy. People are like, Jonathan, what do I call you? You're not my mentor. You're my coach. You're my life coach. What, what like, what do we call you? And I, I was like, I, I don't really have a name for it. We just called it personal branding. I was their creative director and that's just what we called it. But I can't make you a star if we're not working on the inside. I got to, I got to like go in there and like reshape things and help you break through fear, help you break through the junk that's in your life, break through what's happening tomorrow that you're too scared to go for. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there was so much stuff happening and I was like, I want to be the Tony Robbins for millennials and Gen Z, but that did not feel authentic to me to be able to speak those words because those aren't the words that I've been relating to for 20 years. Right. 
you know? And so I, so it was so incredible the past year that it all was like, bam, personal branding. You, you've always done it this way. I figured out my own brand in all of this. Right. I mean, I had to do the same thing that I'm asking every single person to do is because we all have to go through it. So to your, to your question, every single person, if you want to make an impact of any kind on this planet, if you want to walk confidently, we're in a digital age. It's only going to grow. It's only going to get bigger. Uh, Gen Z, it is a, it's a world of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. And everybody in order, I mean, we're going into corporations to help them teach their teams how to build personal brands because everybody in the team has to have one in order for you to reach the full capacity of the team. Um, we are going into schools. We're, I mean, we're totally changing on so many levels to help people understand how they can be very powerful in who they are. And uh, it, every single person needs it. If you don't, you're going to get left behind. I think that this is a very important conversation to have when we talk about how right now in this day and age, especially with social media, Everybody is curating content, right? And we all are putting out a message whether we realize it or not. Yep. And so I know with us as an organization, like I, you know, it said, it's like who's setting the standard, who's setting the example for socially conscious content, which I think should would also benefit you if you think about socially conscious content because, um, because you're creating the impact you want, right? So as people move forward, I mean, I... I want you to talk about the reasons somebody needs to really focus on creating a personal brand. Um, I know that from my perspective, you know, one of the forefronts I think is that it does help you stand out from the crowd, right? Yeah. So for you, when you're working and it helps you stand out from the crowd, it leads to opportunities It inspires trust in your audience, which is very, very important, right? Like personal branding and developing a really, an audience, it's such a weird word because, you know, you think audience, you think you're on a stage yeah. and you're performing. But in reality, what yeah. is your audience? Your audience is everyone consuming the content you're putting out, whether it's yeah. a picture or a video. It's your family. It's your friends. It's the closest people around you that are following you. And here's the thing is that is in order to be influential and, you know, we think, oh, influencer, you have a million followers. No, influent, being influential means that you have influence. When you speak, people listen, right? If you want to be a leader of any kind, I don't care if you are the shy, quiet kid. It doesn't matter if you're the loud mouth over there. You need to know how to show up in order to make your greatest impact. And here's the deal is that mental health is one of the big greatest issues we have, right? That's facing us. We, you know, honestly, it's our biggest plague is, is mental health. Right. I would and agree. so much that that happens to be with social media. We're looking at what people are putting out there. Um, it's what I call masturbating on social media, where people are just posting photos of themselves. It's just self gratification. Right. It doesn't feed anything. It doesn't feed our hearts. We're just looking at a photo, liking, scrolling, whatever. There's no message. There's no intent behind it. There's no reason really to be posting a photo of yourself if it's not making somebody else feel something. Right. 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 So it's one of these things where I, I just, um, we are just in a day and age where that if you don't have it, it is you, you're more likely to get in this, this, if you're not making that impact, if you're not being an influencer and doing something with intention, taking the focus off of you and focusing on everybody else, mental health will see, will, will pop in our lack of mental, good mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when the anxiety, depression, um, you start comparing yourself to everybody else rather than going out and making social impact and change that really truly makes a person happy even when you're really miserable right right so if i'm a person who wants to start creating social impact and, and do it through my brand what do you think and, and i say this because a lot of our audience they are advocates they are people passionate about making social impact but they don't understand how to go about it so when you sit down with somebody who says i want to make an impact i mean what's the first step where do you start well, I, you know, number one is sharing your story of why you want to create the impact. So if you notice the first thing that I did when I came on here is I told my story, I tell it intentionally, learn from me. This is what, this is what we do. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you tell your story to make sure that you are connecting with somebody because you may not remember a lot about me, but my story, if it impacts you, you'll remember that story before you're going to remember my name. So on that. 
you don't know this. This is kind of funny. So I remember the first time I talked to you on Clubhouse. Do you want to know why I remember? Why? <laughs> okay. So I go into a room in Clubhouse, guys. And and I look, I'm not I'm not not savvy at how to brand. I mean, I I, mean, I wasn't we, we do run across some people that they have no idea where to start. Like I had my bio up first night. And I mean, it, of course, it's a fluid. You change what you feel, you know, you want to share and whatnot. But I remember the first time I met Mr. Jonathan George and when I was in a room and you very politely, you were not in any way. But I had a part in my bio that just said, listen, I've been through a lot of things in my life. But I kind of was like, I'm not going to go into it. You know, I, I intentionally was creating a little bit of elusiveness. But you distinctly said, listen, why don't you change that and let people know what you've gone through? I want to know what you've gone through. And while at that time in my head, I thought, well, I appreciate the advice, Mr. George. I didn't ask for it, but I love that you are reminding me you are right. And it's, it's like, it just made me think, okay, how do I want to do it? Because sometimes I feel like when you do have that much, it's a lot. I mean, I, I can't lot. even put on my, when really, even, in, even yeah. now, I don't yeah. have it on there. I don't have all sexual assault and all these things. And that's why when some people hear my story, they're like, oh, I'm yeah, I didn't know that. I was how? like, you told that last week. And <laughs> I was like, what? I didn't know all that about you. And then it just, again, what did it do? Right. It made me just be like, I'm going to, I'm right behind you that much more because right. like, Honestly, people look at people and they get this perception. Oh, she's perfect. Oh, she's got her life together. She knows what she's doing. She's married to a king. She's the, all this stuff. But people don't know the real truth. So it breaks down those walls. Right, exactly. Right? It, Which these, is why I appreciate everybody, that you telling me that. You know, everybody puts it out of the wall. It's like, oh, she's beautiful. I, I, she's a bitch. You know, people are going to, they all, people automatically put you in a box. But when they, when you tell that story, it just shatters all that. And allows people just to like connect on a spiritual level. And once you connect on a spiritual level, you can never break that spiritual level, that connection. Right. And when somebody shares with you honestly and openly and just pours it from the heart, people will become a raving fan. Right. And so to your question about how, what do you do when you are trying to create impact, you've got to remember your story. Second thing is people got to like you, Right. Creating change does not mean that you have to be ugly and a loud mouth and cuss everybody out and spit in people's face. That does not create change. Right. What does that do? That attracts more of the ugliness. If you want to create change, my dad said, you, he always called me a honey mouth. <laughs> he said, you can get anything you want, son, in life. He said, but you just always got to use it well. Right. And I was nice to people. I've always been nice to people. And I've gotten in just about any door that I've ever wanted to. And it's not because it's manipulative. Right. It's because I genuinely feel what I feel and I say what I say and I'm honest and I'm real, but I'm nice about things. They're nice to people. I make people feel good. So people respond to that. What you put out energetically is what you're going to get back. Right. So you want to make sure, listen, I love social impact, but you can watch the news every day. And I do, you do have to get loud sometimes. You got to get a big megaphone and yell it, but you got to yell it because there are things that I'm so passionate about that I mean, I'm going to speak so strongly about. However, I'm never going to be ugly or nasty. Right, right, exactly. I mean, it's, it's a very, I think that in order to make progress, in order to build those bridges, we, we have to, you know, respect one another. And it's very, critical i think to really moving the needle forward especially like you said social impact and people say it and it's such a, it is you know it's one of those things that's a buzzword it's becoming yeah. cool to care but like you said there are people who authentically care and then there's people who just want to kind of jump on that boat and yeah. and how, how so how are you showing up and i love that you say that and i really genuinely told the story and, and i want to go back because I appreciate you. And I actually want to go back and just say, you know, I appreciate you being vulnerable here and with us and sharing not just here. Also, you do it on Clubhouse and you, you even with me that evening. And I don't know if you remember that. You probably don't because I know you tell people a million times great advice and, and consult for that. I know you normally people have to pay you quite a considerable amount of money and you're giving this advice out for free. So thank you for that. And thank you for sharing it here. Um, when we talk about building a brand around the results, right? Like, you know, like we said, the, the buzzword of social impact and you want to build around a brand around a result. How should an organization or a person like kind of move that personal brand and that brand story forward? Like, where do you start with that? Well, number one is telling it, right? It's, it's sharing it. And you've, let me just say this is that telling a story isn't you just 
getting up and just blabbing. A story has to be told with intention, has to come from an empowered place, and it has to relate to your audience. Right. Without those three elements, it falls on deaf ears. It is literally, uh, it falls flat. You, you, you literally, when people tell story, stories and it's like 30 minutes long and you're just like going, oh my God, I'm about to like just cry right now. I'm going to go like, oh, I'm going to open up those sugar patch kids that I gave you. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's just that the stories have to be put out. So even like on social media, so if you have an Instagram page and look, just look at your Instagram, it, what story is it really telling? What are you doing? What are you, how are you showing what you're saying? If you're saying that you are trying to uh, help protect uh, trans, right? And if you're, if you're, if you're doing that and that's like, okay, I'm doing this, but you're just sitting there talking. Okay. Show me the stories. Tell me the story of Betty. Tell me the story of my nephew who is trans. Right. Tell me the story of what these people are doing out in the world that's doing so incredibly. I mean, like my nephew is the, uh, he was the presidential scholarship winner at SMU in Texas and Dallas. That's incredible. It's the highest award you can get <laughs> as a trans student, right? Wow. Powerful. He's so intelligent and smart, like genius, right? And big into social impact. But again, I sit there and watch and I, and I say it all the time is like, listen, if you want to make social impact, you've got to quit screaming negativity. Let's tell the story. Let's it's, it's about winning. Now, sometimes you got to go out and fight, right? Like, I mean, I'm just to be straight up. You got to go to war sometimes. Uh, just because you're nice and sweet doesn't mean that you can't fight. Now, the mat says, welcome, not wipe your feet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So it's like we, you know, sometimes you got to stand up and fight and you got to be really strong and powerful. But at the end of the day, where, what is the, what vibrational level are you vibrating at? Because remember, you're going to get back worse than what you're putting out if it's not vibrating at the right level. Right. Well, and we hear a lot of, you know, I think, I think the reason I ask this question is because we get a lot of people that are like, I want to end human trafficking or mm -hmm. I want to end, you know, I want to uh, help women who have gone through domestic violence and, you know, having the question of how do I go about that? That's, this is why I asked you because it is, I see, I think I'm constantly inspired by the people who get up and say, I may just be one person, but you know what? I know I can make a difference. 100%. But here's the thing too, is that I think that we think that we got to go at it alone. And that is not the case at all. Right. So I'm somebody who's always been on my own because, you know, of being hurt and the fears and all that stuff that I've worked through. But, and, and, and let me just say, I'm 48 and I'm literally like at this point of like, you know, it's two years ago that I even broke, knew that I had fears. But I kept hitting these glass ceilings. What? What's this glass ceiling that I keep hitting? Why can't I get past that thing? I know where I'm supposed to be, but I can't get past there. It was all this fear. And during that fear, I realized, oh my God, I've got to surround myself with other people rather than being scared I'm going to be judged by these people. I need to be by greater people. So what I realized is that we do not have to do anything alone. And one of my greatest things, gifts from a clubhouse has been the joint ventures that I'm creating with other people, right? Also joining with other organizations that already exist and be a spokesperson for that person. We do not always have to do this on our own. Right. Yeah, no, right? should we? Collaboration is everything. And collaboration, actually, for anyone who's trying to do something, if there is a reason Drake was on every record. There's a reason, you know, Cardi B and, and Nicki Minaj. I mean, even back in the day, yeah. music collaboration meant you were leveraging other audience. I mean, Aerosmith and Run DMC, you know, that was a mastermind in the sense because you took two totally different genres of music, brought them together, and ultimately, you know, Run DMC gained new, everyone loves, you know, yeah. Walk This Way. And this yeah. <laughs> so you have that music background, I have that music background. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, but I, and I mean, I left, truly left music many, many years ago, but it's still, I, it's always part of me. I think that recognition and, and so going to, you know, like what you're doing now with Unleash Your Rockstar and kind of diving more into, actually, you know what, really when you broke that glass ceiling. So that moment came that that ceiling came crashing down. 
What was that moment like for you? And what was it that really created that breakthrough? Okay, so I went to go get my master's practitioner's license in neuro-linguistic programming, social-emotional intelligence, life coaching. I, I just wanted to have some tools in my tool belt because this right. is why I was like, I'm going to be Tony Robbins, right? <laughs> and um, and even though I've never I've never been to any of his events, that's just the only person I could think of. You just of. see the people crying in the audience. Right, and, like, right. and, they, and you know yeah. that he's creating impact and yeah, you want to Yeah, massive that's, that's impact. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's all I ever wanted to do. But so I, I went and got this and my teacher asked, you know, she's like, I'm going to do some examples on you guys. Tell me what it is that you want your something that you're going through. And I'm going to teach you how to do this on you. You're going to go through this experience and see how powerful it is. And I knew that I had these fears, but I was like, where do these fears come from? I don't know what they are. I thought that I'd forgiven everybody. I thought that I are truly, I'm like one of these people who like everything happens for a reason. I'm cool. I'm fine. But then I was like, I don't know, really know what this is. So she took me and set me in a chair for 20 minutes. The whole group of people put together this design for me specifically for me I felt really special but literally they're like oh he's he's gonna just see through this stuff and but literally I mean I was bawling with snot running out my nose I she took me back to if you know NLP and it really is just rewiring how the brain thinks about things and seeing it but she, it's, she took me back to what I thought it was. And she goes, no, go back further. And I was like, oh my God, I was 21 years old. My uncle told me he didn't like me and he was my pastor. And like I'd served in, under his ministry and trying to be straight. And so there was like that fear of judgment, not being good enough again. And she goes, nope, it's even further back than that. Then took me back to being a kid where I was bullied so badly. Even though I was a popular kid, I was still so bullied that, you know, that stuff still sticks with you, right? And I literally was like, it broke through with like that for for me and it was like no turning back it's like this shackles and these weights like just fell off of me and i was like oh you know <laughs> like i'm like so free right now it was amazing and uh that is where it was like i finally felt like it was the last thing in my life that was holding me back to something old that something that was like chaining me down to the ground that i couldn't keep walking and i didn't even know what it was it was so subconscious right Right. It unlocked me. I love that. And I think that when we talk, if, when you talk about the neuro linguistic, oh my goodness. Yes. Cause even I, I just shared this. I had a, I mean, when I went through my health issues and I still, I live every day with health issues. Um, I rely very much on meditation. I rely on meditation to tell my body to fix those neural pathways, to recreate new ones. Um, I, it's just a whole therapy. I went through it when I, that self therapy that I went through when I had cancer. And I remember I would envision my healthy cells, like beating the crap out of the cancer cells. Right, and right, right. look, do I know if it worked? I, I just know that I'm still here. And I do know that I think I very much believe in the power of the mind that we so don't tap into well, the, the power of forgiveness. Yeah, which is something right. I actually, if you look on my note, forgiveness. Let's talk about forgiveness, especially with regards to branding oneself and really putting yourself out there. I actually know the story of somebody um, that we were going to collaborate with. We did collaborate with, and then we were going to do some more work for it. But she was actually not really fully all ready. She, she thought she had been telling her story, but her story was very difficult. It was a very difficult one. And then essentially she came to a point where she said, I'm retiring my story because I feel now I'm the monkey in the room, right? Like right. my story is being used for sensationalism instead of really acknowledging me as a person. When it comes to branding and it comes to our background and some of the things we really have to work through, how important is that? Like when you go down that road? Well, you know, one of the things is that forgiveness is for you. It's not for the other person. I mean, it can be for the other person as well. Sometimes people need to be forgiven. However, the forgiveness truly is for us. And it's negative energy that's stored. Again, back to energy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's when you take negative energy and that negative energy is stored in you, that's what turns into cancer. That's what turns into heart disease, stress, anxiety, depression, all these different things. Uh, even bipolar, you know, if when when you take something that is so powerful and that energy, it's like, you know, we see movies all the time, the good and the evil, like fighting and the, this like this and it's pulling and tugging. 
But when you've not dealt with those things, it begins to store in the body and it will turn into some kind of element of some kind. Now, I don't believe that's always the case. I do believe that there are circumstances that don't mean that. But I think for most of us that when ailment comes from, it comes from unforgiveness or unhealing as you haven't healed and healing is when you truly forgive. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that. And I think that regardless, I just, you know, the, the things that hold us back, I mean, like, it's like I always say, you know, what divides us is an illusion and what often holds us back. It's, it's, you know, it's the thing it's in your mind, it's in your head, the war is in our head. Right. Um, so I completely, I, I appreciate and, and understand that perspective when it comes to like actually an audio platform, like, like clubhouse, how much can an app like that, I mean, we're seeing it in real time, but how much have you actually seen that type of audio platform serve someone who is seeking to burn, build a personal brand? Well, I want to answer your, your your question before this oh, about sorry, about how you the brain, no, because I, I kind of skipped over it, but, and sometimes I tend to do that because I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I <did> squirrel, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm bad. But here's my, the thing. My audience is right, used to it with right, me, right, by the way. Right, right, right. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. <laughs> But, you know, one of the things is that you've got to think about as your personal brand is that anytime there's personal development that needs to be had, that needs to be done, you've got to work through those things because that is what is being put out to the universe. That's what if I come to you and I'm, I'm leading with my insecurities or I'm leading with fear, I'm leading with anxiety, I'm leading with whatever junk that I'm carrying around with me. That's all you're going to perceive of me unless right. you are a higher vibrational person who can break, see through those things. Like I can see right straight through those things and be like, that's how, that, 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 that's what that is. Whereas like my sister would be like, oh my God, I can't stand that person. It drives me nervous. I was like, I was like, no, you're experienced their insecurity. That's what's showing up right now. Right. So if you don't work through your junk, if you don't work through and learn how to forgive and heal yourself, it does, it's not, it's internal. And it may not always show up. Nobody really knew that I, that I had fear, but I was unwilling to work with certain people because I was scared of being judged. Mm. So I wouldn't take jobs. Right. I wouldn't t work with the bigger people because it was just like, I'm not good enough. I, I, I'm going to be found out I'm a fraud. When I was like the most talented person that I knew, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that imposter syndrome that imposter really syndrome. popped in. Yeah. And, and it was because of my own fears. It had nothing to do with my abilities or my talents. It had to do with being the fear of being judged and it really everything that that keeps us back comes back to the fear mm -hmm. it's all fear it's mm -hmm. fear-based i would agree i agree i agree in imposter syndrome so you have people ready to show up what do you tell the person that you're working with and and helping them become stronger and develop their brand when they do have that moment where it's like they show up to the table and then they feel like i don't deserve a seat here well, it's really amazing because, you know, the question that you had asked about Clubhouse and finding your personal brand on a platform like that, which has been incredible. And so many of us, including myself, started getting around all these incredibly look like what very successful people. Everybody's a bazillionaire. And you're like, what am I doing on this stage with bazillionaires? Like, I don't know anything about this. What is this about? Right. <laughs> and so like, it's like all these different things. So you start going, wait, who am I? But it helps you really hone in on exactly your lane, what you're offering. And, and so it's been really incredible for that. Um, what was your second question? Because I, I, I know went, oh, you went back, uh, but it actually fed it, into it. It, just it does. Perfectly. It goes specifically, it, but I can't remember what the exact was. Um, yeah, neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what it was over there? She's like, no, I wasn't Engineer. listening to you. No, I mean, just in general, though. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I know I, because I was just enthralled with what you were saying and you say it so well, no, organically, you know, I think we're hitting those points. I mean, ultimately you, in order to build the brand, yeah, you have to deal with the things that you've dealt with. And then, and I do love how the audio app is giving people an opportunity because you're kind of at least removing one of the layers of nervousness, like to get oh, on the stage, syndrome. right? Imposter we were syndrome. About that, exactly. Yes. When they show up to a platform like Clubhouse, and there's going to be more, by the way, this audio, now that people realize, you know, I heard LinkedIn is developing. So I, I said audio app intentionally because I think that now people are starting to understand the benefit of it. Right. It kind of reminds, it goes back to like the CB, it goes back to the voice. Right. 
and how powerful our voice is. Well, and here's the thing about imposter syndrome is it's a lack of understanding who you are. It's a lack of understanding really what you've accomplished and how to, how to position that. So if I take this here and I put, it's still this and I hide it behind here, nobody sees it. But if I take it and I position it here and then I you put it, I put my phone on there. Now it's, it has a purpose and a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And so now people are able to see that and be like, oh, wow, look at that accomplishment. Look what he's doing with that. Right. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy to me. The most accomplished people that I've ever met don't know how to show up because they don't, don't know. And that's the reason why you do have coaches. That's the reason why you have somebody like me who's like, <laughs> Are you insane? Would you stop being stupid right now? This is what it is. This is what it's very simple. It's very easy, but we can't see it for ourselves. Right. Hello. I'm guilty right here. Party of one guilty yep. party of one. Right. <laughs> so I get it. I understand it. So, you know, I, I just want to think about, I don't want to forget my phone. So I'm like, Ooh, I better not leave it there. I will be like, Ooh, that looks nice. That's Ooh, their stuff. But you know, it's like one of those things that the imposter syndrome comes, it can, is easily to break through when you understand how to show up. Right. And this is really what my whole movement is based around is to break through all that stuff and to understand exactly who you are, understand your talents. And and I don't say talents in like, oh, you can play the piano. No, no not the oh, you can create a website. No, those are skill sets. I'm talking about true superpowers. Understanding your why you're showing up in the world, like what is the true intention of this? Understanding your flaws. And this is what I call being a flock star, having flaws and still being a rock star. You know what? When we talk about that match profile I had up on my, when I met my husband, I actually intentionally put, I do not lock, I do not like long walks on the beach. And I was, it was being facetious, of course, but it was because like, or, and I said, I'm not patient. Like, you know how people go on and they always try to sell all the wonderful things that they may not really be so true, but we say it because we want people to feel that we're, you know, and I was like, no, I, I'm just not going to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm actually nice, but I'm not patient. I'm not a very patient person. Right, right. And like you said, understanding who you are and not being afraid to say, this is who I am. Right. I and mean, I feel like that serves you better. But like just right now, you saying, Hey, I'm not a patient person. I realize that about myself. That way you just disarmed haters. You disarmed anybody for her to over here to say, oh my God, she's the most impatient person in the world. Whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, she's impatient. We love her still. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I'm going to take a charge for you and make sure this is taken care of so that you are not having to worry about those things that make you impatient. You've, you've done two things. You've disarmed the haters and you've allowed somebody to step up and step up into their power. And that is why we, it's important to have flaws. Now flaws can, can, can be detrimental to you and absolutely destroy you. Uh, but you know, it could be just flaws about having low energy, bad attitude, uh, late, you know what I mean? There's, there's different things, but it doesn't mean we don't work towards fixing those things or making them best, the best that they can be right. and trying to improve them. However, they're just flaws that we have to work through and not allowing that to be a point of soreness for us or insecurity. It's just like, yeah, this is me. This yeah. is who I am. I'm a little, you know, all over the place. I'm, you know, what I mean, this is just who I am. Um, so when we understand that, it makes us really powerful. So when you put all those pieces together and our personal stories that we go through and we know how to just articulate it at the core level. This helps us maneuver powerfully right. through things and, and, and just those basics. That's where the personal development comes in, right? Mm -hmm. This is the personal development side. This is the heart of the brand. This is what I call the heart. This is where the rock star is born. This is where the rock star is created. And so when you know how to stand up powerfully in who you are, powerfully into what is inside of here, that's when people love you. That's when you, you're, it's just like, it's just when you become super powerful. When you become a human hit maker, because you, I love that it's at human hit maker, because I feel like you're so much focused on the person, not necessarily the facade. Yeah. So I love that about you. Where can our audience connect with you to stay in touch and support you, Jonathan? Well, you know what? I just lost my Instagram, <laughs> Jonathan George, but um, Unleash Your Rockstar. We just, we started it. Uh, I think we have 211 followers. It's like 
kind of like lonely over there in that sea, you know, you kind of, you're like, oh my, but I've actually loved it. Everybody's like, oh my God, I'll be stressed. And I was like, you know what? It's okay. I can get, I, we will get that back. But I'm enjoying like the smaller group and all those ghost followers and people that have disappeared off of Instagram. Like I'm seeing weird stuff in my feed all the time. People, I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> so it's kind of actually been fun to start over, but Unleash Your Rockstar across the board, UnleashYourRockstar.com. Um, this is where we are really, uh, you know, again, we're serving schools, powerfully serving schools because we've got a major issue in our school system, mm -hmm. starting with the teachers down, mental health, burnout, all this stuff. We completely have year long programs to support schools. Very powerful stuff. Somebody is a joint venture from Clubhouse, which is really amazing. Then we have one for the corporate. Then we have for the per uh, for just people. Right. right. And then I've got it for like business entrepreneurs, that kind of stuff. So we serve in different areas, but it's all based off of personal branding. So come in there, find where you belong, join our communities. Um, the other thing is that my book is coming out, I'm making a commitment. Oh my God. Oh, write okay. it down. Good. Uh, come back in. April 7th. Oh my God. Unleash your rock star. All right. I'm just making it. It's, yeah. It, April 7th is today. So keep me, keep me to my word is my goal is to have it out by September 1st. Because it's set on my desk for two and a half years, feeling like an imposter. Well, we need um, to have coffee about and, that, right? You know, yeah. Because uh, yeah, no, that's exciting. So we will be. Then we'll have you back. That'd so be perfect. On my website, you can go and get the. Let's go ahead and sign up, and I'm going to give free the book for free to people, um, just who are on that sign up sheet, just to get it started and amazing. going. So amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you, and I love your energy, and I love all that you're doing. Thank you. You have to promise to come back when you release the book. Yes. I'm going to have a book. I'm going to be like, oh, my God, my book. Yes. I love it. I love it. Creating a true legacy. To everyone at home, we want to thank you for hanging out. Be sure to come back again for next week. And thank you so much for letting us be Unsugarcoated. Next week.